All right. Hello, everybody. Bonjour. Comment ça va? J'espère tout va bien. And uh, we start our daily 7 a.m. and talk show. I'm your host, Ishtar Kantor, Monte Kansi Neyman, and here are my great guests. I would like to introduce uh, Lynn Tad, Sylvie Cotton, and Anna Kalvaitis. Three amazing artists uh, I'm going to have a very deep talk with. But before I go do that, I would like to thank uh, the great food that we have here every day. Yeah, and we are going to provide you mental food after this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank, thanks, uh, Paul, for inviting me and uh, giving me this great chance to. I was just uh, voice. Ah, you were just uh, joking, yeah. But <laughs> But I took it seriously. Yeah. I'm here. Anyway, yeah. So um, we actually know each other with Paul for a long time, and we had hand in um, early uh, performance uh, festival activities before uh, 7 D and all kind of uh, events. Uh, my uh, studio is usually open to festivals, and I have held uh, in my own uh, apartment many. Uh, well, not these big festivals, but smaller ones. Uh, I like it. I like to call them apartment festivals. <laughs> so anyway, I'm not going to talk about me. You know about me a lot because I'm a criminal and a troublemaker. And uh, so uh, I rather would like to uh, start with my invited guests, who were actually invited by 7 d uh, I don't know how to begin with, but well, let's go uh, one by one. Uh, unfortunately, I never seen the work of Lean Pad. I don't know how it happened because I almost know everybody and I, I travel extensively and I love Burma. Actually, never been in Burma. Maybe that's why he's from Myanmar. I don't know how to call it Burma or Myanmar. Well, I think it works either way. Yeah, okay, so Burma, Myanmar, an amazing country he's from, like uh, <clears throat> Burma has so interesting history from military occupation to communism and uh, non-democracy. And I always wanted to live there because at that time it seemed to be so cheap and when I retire I'm going to get $100 a month from uh, Canada for being an artist all my life. And in Burma, I could live for uh, for a month from hundred dollar a few years ago. Not anymore. It's very expensive now. Yeah. <laughs> How many places left? No. Well, uh, Indonesia is not bad. Yeah. Well, actually, you can interrupt us anytime. Uh, no hands up. Just start uh, yelling or whatever. Anyway, so but we have uh, mics just for the yeah. sake of the video. So. Lin is uh, an amazing artist whose work uh, I only know from the internet and uh, he gave me three little books, booklets uh, and I went through and I was so amazed that he really loves Shakespeare. And so he's not only uh, into performance art but theater, dance and uh, other forms he likes to explore and his performance art is very uh, socio-political. <clears throat> Uh, likes to uh, invade uh, the streets and do something interactive with people. Uh, do you like to say something, add anything to this? Uh, yeah, yeah, and he lives in Paris. Uh, he, was, uh, he grew up in Burma, but lives in Paris presently. Well, yeah, I'm originally from Burma, which is also known as Myanmar currently, and um, uh, for the moment being, I'm, I'm based in Paris, so I'm not only like a very, like a, in a very rigid sense, I'm not really like a like performance artist, performance artist, because I'm involved in like a, like different sorts of like activities, I would call performative activities, so I'm involved in like not only in performance art, but also some sort of like experimental theater, dance, and um, 
stand-up comedy, monologue, this and that. So I, I don't really, uh, I don't really want to strictly define myself as a performance artist, performance artist. So yeah, this is, uh, I think it's uh, quite, it's a, I think I, it's a quite difficult position for me, you know, when people ask me you know, what I do exactly, because my interest is quite, 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 uh, quite wide and quite diverse. But um, uh, performance art or art performance <coughs> is one of the very strong interests, and I approach it very intimately. Mm. Excellent. Mm. Sylvie, hey, uh, we know each other for a long time. Sylvie is from Montreal, and uh, I uh, used to live in Montreal. I lived there for 15 years, and I, I still had a studio like a few years ago, but then I had to give it up because I can't pay to places at the same time, it's impossible. It's just, Montreal used to be cheap. It's not anymore, actually. Even the plateau is getting expensive, no? Yeah, but I don't really know because I live on the plateau. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I, I made some notes about uh, Sylvie's, uh, my, with my own words, can be described, her work can be described as highly poetical. Poetry is very, kind of very important words and uh, also the uh, very uh, contemplative, uh, uh, meditative. Uh, uh, yesterday's performance, for example, was uh, almost uh, like uh, there is the big poem on the wall still that was part of the production. <laughs> it's like a conceptual uh, poetry for me anyway. Don't you think so? Maybe not exactly, but uh, okay. we, well, we, we can, can talk about, about that. that yeah. <laughs> and she's uh, searching for logical steps and unfolding actions through a collective performance. So she also does her own work, uh, not only participatory work, but her own uh, personal work and uh, uses many different forms, not only performance art, but also including uh, drawing or installation or uh, yeah so it's very complex uh, work would you like to uh, add anything to this no <laughs> not for the moment well, I mean, you are I mean that, 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 that's true that my work has many branches and that uh, uh, depending on where I am or what I feel to do I kind of uh, use one of these one of those, but um, it's always the same research. You know, it's always the same research, and in this research, uh, I like to um, um, meet the other person or another a bunch of people and try to find ways to connect. So in different ways. And you are a Buddhist, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's not, so, yeah. not something I, I usually say. <laughs> well, uh, I can say it. <laughs> <laughs> you said it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, uh, for me, uh, that performance, uh, she doesn't need audience, actually. She can do this work without audience, just... Uh, and that's, that's, that's the source of performance art, because I always thought that the performance art is really not for the audience. And, and when it's uh, for, to seduce the audience, it's, it's not really performance art anymore. But anyway, we talk about that later. Thank you, Sylvie. Here is Anna Kalvaitis. Anna Kalvaitis from Poznan, Poland. An amazing city. Poznan is very close to Berlin and it's an old-fashioned uh, city with very uh, traditional building, buildings, but it also has an industrial section and lots of performance art uh, in Poznan. And so uh, I guess it's a very active city in performance art, yeah? I was there a couple of times and uh, performed there and uh, yeah, it's amazing how <coughs> And in, in the whole Polish performance art is really strong because they also have this background of uh, in theater, Tadeusz Kantor, Grotowski, and all very important, uh, <coughs> very important uh, <coughs> artists from the old times, from the uh, 50s uh, or even before. 
exploring uh, almost performance art, but at that time it was happening and it was experimental theater. Today is performance art, yeah. So Anna did an amazing performance yesterday. She ran out from the gallery, completely abandoned everybody, and she just uh, on her own started running in the middle of the street like a crazy woman. <laughs> Well, that's what everybody said because I was running after her and I heard people talking and they said, Oh, look at that crazy woman! Look, 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 look! <laughs> <laughs> and nobody knows what's happening, but in this neighborhood it's actually uh, okay because this is a kind of sketch, very kind of... Uh, Lots of uh, criminal activities, prostitution, used to be like that anyway. And artists live here, so uh, they used to this crazy kind of people, yeah. And she was running, I don't know how far, to Spadina, or where did you stop? I, I couldn't uh, follow anymore. So right before Bathurst. Oh, Bathurst? Okay. I think like Townstone. Yeah. yeah. You followed with the camera? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I always said Homer's day. And the car, everybody went crazy and, and it was amazing that the, the lights were always green. <laughs> when we get to the intersections, yeah. So uh, she was really lucky also, didn't get arrested at all. Uh, nobody said, do you need any help? Yeah. <laughs> and she was bad feet covered with blood-looking uh, red paint and uh, screaming and having two megaphones uh, with sirens and whistle and it was like, a, yeah, totally, uh, I don't know how to describe it more, but <clears throat> that's the work she likes to do. She likes to get out from the gallery space and right into some kind of an interaction with society and uh, <clears throat> and completely um, involve herself like a boxer fight or a... You, you actually did some boxing performance, yeah? She's very physical. She likes to explore the body to the limits, yeah. And she often gets uh, completely uh, <clears throat> out of her mind. Like yesterday, she started uh, screaming, uh, Artificial! Artificial! That was it, yeah? Because everything is so artificial uh, in, inside, and that's why she ran out to, uh, to get into reality and leave behind this artificial space, I think. <coughs> well, do you want to add something to this? Uh, yes, I would like to uh, introduce myself okay. as well. Uh, my name is Anna Kampaitis, I'm from Poland, which I'm proud of it. And uh, I would like to thank you to Johanna to bring me there. I'm really appreciate for that. Um, I have chance to uh, hear very interesting people and see very good uh, art stuff. So I'm really happy of that. And I have chance to be in a place, new place, which I've never been before. So I can say that in this couple of days, I learn a lot. Uh, and I'm thinking about myself uh, very often, that I'm a very lucky person. Uh, because very often I met on my path in a high class people. So I'm really lucky. And. Um, I'm not pretty much good to uh, speak about my artwork and speak about performance art. And a um, couple of weeks, uh, I heard some sentence that um, if it's something complicated, you should, it should not try to simplify. So, because I don't explain really uh, the level of performance art, so I will leave more space for a person who can do that. So, thank you very much. Hey, yeah, let's give a hand to uh, these three great artists. And now let's go into the uh, subjects. Uh, uh, Paul, I think you asked me to talk about the edge. Uh, well, that's just the title. Yeah, one. that was, yeah, well, anyway, I changed it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's basically the same thing, of course. And I 
have a really important question to start this. Uh, and what I would like to know, uh, why did you become performance artist? Like why somebody wants to become, especially today, a performance artist? Because I know from my situation, when I was that young, I wanted to be a performance artist because performance art was the newest thing, it was the most radical thing, it was the most subversive thing. And uh, I just wanted to explore that completely uh, and uh, get away from the prison of art and build new open situations through performance art. And, uh, but now performance art, especially in Canada, you can learn in schools. It's, it becomes part of the academic uh, uh, system and pe people are doing their PhDs uh, in performance art and uh, there are lots of uh, professionals in performance art and all these things, so it's changed. And so I, I just want to know why people become performance artists, why they choose this uh, very difficult and sometimes hopeless uh, art form that never ta <laughs> <laughs> takes you any kind of uh, financial success, for example, or sometimes it happens to some lucky people, but most of the time, you know, you live your life in poverty and, uh, uh, well, you struggle to maybe publish a book at the end of your life and uh, something like this that uh, maybe uh, tells what you have done. But you can't get rid of it somehow. It's, you enjoy it so much. You get together at these events and have fun and uh, it's, it's, uh, I think it's the best thing I can imagine for myself. But anyway, what about you, Anna? Why did you become a performance artist? That's the question. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Anybody force you to become a performance artist? No, no one. <laughs> so, did you learn about performance art in school? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, it was the first. Uh, that was, uh, that's how you got confronted by performance art the first time in school? Yeah. Oh. So, schools are good for something. I always tell, <laughs> tell my students whenever I have a chance to teach, hey, don't go to art school, study something else, uh, study technology or science, something you really can use. And then you can uh, relate to these things, but don't go to art supply stores, go to hardware stores and uh, junkyards and uh, places like that, or hospitals if you need any ideas. Anyway, so yeah. <laughs> She learned about performance art in school, and so uh, you are still basically in school. Yeah. And you are finishing your PhD. I'm starting. Starting. Yeah. Okay. What's the uh, subject? Uh, yes, I'm trying. Uh, it's the beginning, so I hope so. I'll, I will develop this topic. But at the moment, um, I'm starting from the point. Um, but I see performance as a, something as a, against the discipline, something like that. Against discipline. Yeah, something, something like that. Like uh, yeah. And you, you are against also many things, like against protection. You don't want to be protected by the festival, for example. You run away from the protection completely. And I was actually uh, concerned about that, what's going to happen, because you were in a danger zone, like, right? into uh, the middle of the street, <laughs> but you enjoy that. It's hard to say, I, love. I don't know. No? So you don't enjoy what you are doing? Uh, sometimes a lot, sometimes yes. Sometimes you uh, suffer. Sometimes it's like uh, two feelings in the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. And what... Uh, what do you think of your Polish performance art, like, <clears throat> how do you, uh, what, you connect to Polish performance art? Oh, um, yeah, I see that um, in Poland we have very great performance artists. So, so you learn from them as well, not only yeah, in school? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course, yeah. 
you you participate. Uh, you were in Piot Court not too long ago, and uh, you know, other performance festivals. There are lots of performance festivals in Poland. They are incredibly active. They are in Krakow, Wroclaw, uh, <coughs> Poznan, and uh, Luch, and uh, Lublin, and yeah, uh -huh. dance. So anyway, yeah, so she's, uh, she became a performance artist because in school she really liked that uh, subject. <laughs> Sylvie. Can I, can I ask yeah. a, yeah, 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 can yeah. I ask a question? Yeah, I, I feel like. Oh yeah, ask questions, please, uh, interrupt, yeah. I feel like we're treating Anna as a hostile uh, witness in a, in, a, in, a, in a jury. She just wants to say very little, which, which is interesting to me because it's very different from the performance where she's really projecting out very loudly to people and, and here you seem very quiet and not say too many words. Uh -huh. And I'm wondering, if, I'm wondering if performance art gives you uh, an opportunity to behave differently in, in everyday life. I never think about this like that, but I think it works like that. Yeah. Can you expand? <laughs> um, Did no. you party last night? I think you're into it. You're into it. It's a very good answer. Sure. Yeah. I think. Uh, yeah, that's the special effect. We need that to wake us up. And <laughs> it, it, makes, it makes a very big, uh, strong feeling in the heart when we, we hear that. Eh? Um, I okay, Sylvia, yeah. I was, yeah. I was uh, wishing to say that uh, how I see that is that, well, in French, let me say it in French first. Oui. L'art consists à mon triste qu'on cache. So, uh, art would consist in. in showing what they are hiding, in a way. And I think that's very interesting, this uh, opposite uh, kind of manifestation of being screaming in the street and being uh, that uh, quiet, you know, while And for example, I've been uh, starting my performance uh, project which, which uh, by the way, I don't call performance really often. I, I prefer to say art action. Um, so I started this, these projects uh, while I'm spending time with uh, people I didn't know, uh, strangers. I spent time like between three hours and we don't know, six hours, 12 hours. And uh, spending time together as a, in intimacy as we don't know each other and we don't know what the other wants to do or likes to do. And, and I think it was a way uh, to, uh, to trust people, uh, trust each other a lot. And we are uh, always calculating or protecting ourselves from you know, some, something to occur that would be uh, difficult. And cre creating these uh, project make me make me uh, uh, meet discomfort as well as uh, a lot of bliss also in a way because uh, at, at certain point with people it becomes very uh, nice to spend time with ben, je veux que tu expliques pourquoi tu es devenu un, un artiste de performance, de la performance. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't, you know, I didn't uh, study fine arts. I, I didn't went to art school. And I went to, to this workshop once because one artist, uh, one, uh, one friend who's not an artist uh, asked me to come with her to this workshop, performance workshop. And it happens that after that, and that's where I met Rachel at this weekend. <laughs> and after that, I just, wanted to do that, uh, but I was very shy. I was not a really uh, 
ready, I think, to do performance, you know, in this way of uh, Alitalia. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe that's why I took this this uh, this way to work on and on performances, uh, and, and I learned so much by doing that. Yeah. So I don't feel I really decided to, to do that. But I, it's I really saw. easy to, to, it's a medium that is really, uh, it's not easy to do it. But it's, uh, it's a light medium. I mean, you can go, I did performances with one water bottle, you know. Uh, it's so easy. You can do a performance with, your, your, with nothing, with your, just your presence and your, your, your shoes. Or your I saw that you did something uh, dedicated to Bali export. Yeah. So she was somebody who kind of admired uh, as a performance artist? Or? Oh, I didn't. Uh, yeah, I like her. Yeah. But I didn't uh, make a research on her. You know? I just wanted to reenact one of her performances where she, offer, she offers her body. I, I did a lot of work, uh, body work. I did a lot of performances. Uh, once I was not shy anymore, <laughs> I did many, many performances. Uh, naked or with my body only and it's really um, strong uh, yeah gives a lot of so uh, did she she kind of influence you inspired you uh, I would not say that this way I, I think I like this piece of her uh, mm -hmm. like many other performances uh, many uh, almost all performer I really admire you know, I, I admire their, their bravery and Ideas. They, for me, it's beyond what I like or what I don't like. It's very interesting. <coughs> okay. Well, uh, so you also uh, basically came to performance art from school. No. In, in some ways, yeah, because you learn about performance art. No. <laughs> no. no. To, a workshop, to a workshop. Workshop. Or yeah, but workshop. you know, two days workshop is not a, you know. Okay, yeah. Any question about this? Uh, uh, yeah? Oh, I don't, this is on. I don't really have a question. I was just, um, even though performance art is potentially a little bit um, kind of institutionalized. I still think it's something that's very like evaded within the institution. Like you might read about um, performance artists like this sort of uh, connected to the 60s, 70s, like sort of avant-garde, but I still think it's very invisible for just from the various art schools I've been in. So for me, it's something that I came to very organically. And I think that it's a constant sort of unfolding because it's such a precarious sort of genre compared to other things, other subjects. And um, and I don't think it's that uncommon for people to be sort of shy, like even someone, someone like, I, I just finished my MFA and Rebecca Bellmer was an artist in residence there. And someone like her who does quite, you know, passionate and loud where there's always a sort of marker um, impulse or pulse that seems consistent for a lot of her socio-political works. She, um, I've noticed something in a couple of performances I've seen before she gets into that zone is that she's quite sort of self-effacing and shy and, and there's a timid that she, there's this nervousness because there's no, as much as you can prepare and even write a score, a lot of people write scores for performance art, um, you know, Simone Forti, Trisha Brown, Yvonne Rayner, and I still think there's so much, um, and I guess those are more dancers, but I think, you know, there's still that, there's still so much potentiality and trust is definitely there and uncertainty, so I think, um, I don't know, connected to what Sully and Anna, I, I don't think um, it's that sort of um, that shyness or of fear. Can I actually react to this and play the devil's advocate a bit? Um, just for Anna, uh, maybe in the future, just imagine that for me and, and through my own inquiry, long years of inquiry, I think there is nothing outside of discipline and not at this point, not at this post-democratic technocracy. Um, performance art is very mainstream. Every art form is very mainstream. So where do we find the liminal 
spaces. That's what I'm searching. Where are the liminal spaces? Well, maybe we don't have to categorize anymore. Maybe, exactly. So maybe we should stop finding performance art to be so liminal and so politically uh, uh, subversive. Um, I think that's just uh, redundant right now. And I'm very surprised what you said. That at school you don't need, uh, you know, you don't find information. Uh, there's a lot. There's a pollution of information on people. Definitely there is lots of information, I agree with that. But it, perhaps what she is referring to more like uh, the, uh, the interest of the students uh, is not as uh, triggered uh, towards this uh, form than uh, maybe other uh, art forms. Uh, Canadian university, actually Canadian universities, no, let's see New York, everybody studies that. Uh -huh. Or in Europe. So I, I don't want to be the only advocate here. Maybe somebody can negate that. Anyway, let's think about this subject and uh, thank you for the comment. And uh, let's continue with Lynn, that he wants to tell us why he became a performance artist. Uh, well, well, I think I I think I'm bringing like a different thing to the table. Uh, in my case, because I I came from Burma, and I think you know before talking about why I be, why I make performance art, I think probably uh, I should. I should explain where I, where I came from. Well, you know, I, I came from a very, very poor country, uh, like third world nation, like one of, like even categorized as like one of the uh, poorest nations in the world or something like that. So, and um, we don't really have art school. We have only like, a, you know, in the whole country, we have only one art university and where they only favor like traditional art forms. So like modern art, contemporary art is like severely oppressed, repressed. So it's not favored at all. And um, and um, and I think performance art came to Burma in my country quite late compared to even other nations in Southeast Asia like Singapore or Thailand even. So you know it came very very late, like uh, in the late uh, I think in the late nineties, like ninety five, ninety six, if I'm not mistaken. So. And um, yeah, I mean, it's still, for me, it's still a very like uh, interesting and uh, like developing form within the local art community. And um, I was, uh, I was originally, well, well, apparently I didn't go to any art school for sure. And um, I studied architecture in Burma. And while I was uh, doing my graduate study, I, I was uh, kind of like reading a lot on like visual arts and contemporary expression because I was, I think as a young Burmese guy trying to find kind of like outlet or not really like, uh, you know, any outlet, but kind of like safe outlet to, you know, express your anger, your like frustration, you know, like uh, in response to your surrounding, you know, what's happening. Because, you know, I mean, you can get arrested for anything, anytime. For example, one example, you know, we have like billboards all over Burma and, you know, it's like, more, it's very propaganda. You know, it's like you have to, you have to be very nationalistic and you have to defend your nation, this and that, and hate all the, all the like foreign oppressions and this and that. Well, you know, I mean, we've been like a British, uh, we were like a former British colony for like more than 100 years. So, you know, the, the military junta used this as like a, like an effective weapon. And um, so what I'm trying to say is like, we don't really, we don't really have any outlet. For example, you know, I know one poet and he's quite controversial within the local art community and he urinated under one of the billboards, like the propaganda billboards and he was arrested. So, you know, yeah, I came from this kind of like environment where you can get arrested for no reason and you can just disappear uh, for not doing anything like you're, you know, very offensive to the government, this and that. So, yeah, I think uh, 
as a young 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 Burmese guy, I was trying to find a safe outlet to express and to to express my anger, I think, and my frustration. So, and uh, strangely, I found uh, myself very comfortable in in this uh, medium, in this form, which is like form is art. I mean, yeah. But at the same time, I think now the, the even the term like performance art, art performance, performance. I think it's become very like how do you say? You know, now I don't, I don't, I don't even care. Maybe you know, I don't care. about our performers in Southeast Asia that Lin said is 1990 is uh, not too late. <laughs> uh, in Thailand we start around 1980. No, no, I mean uh, it, it came to Burma quite late uh, I mean, uh, compared to some other Southeast Asian nations. In, yeah, in Thailand it's 19, uh, 1980 because of the some of the senior artists he studied from uh, Chicago you need a step to the point of so he came back to Thailand and started a little group to do performance in Bangkok. That's the first one we have. And also in Indonesia, I just back from the August, I talked with uh, Melati... I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> also she back to Indonesia to exhibit uh, a, a young artist in her hometown, Solo. And she talked about Indonesian uh, performance. Uh, they start the same time in Thailand, 1980 or 1983, something like this. Also in Philippines. Uh, most of the performance art in Southeast Asia, we start from the protesting. We did. We didn't. Uh, we didn't start from for the art scene. And uh, after that, we. Uh, I don't know how to say. It. We come transfer to the art. That's so it's what was part of the activist uh, movement. Um, how artists and art activists we merge together. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Anybody else would like to? Yeah. Okay. I just was going to go back to your question about what is what is liminal now, and I feel like um, I feel like all through the 20th century there was this big focus on what is new, what is new, what is new, and and that was the main value for what was what made good art versus not good art was how new it was, and I feel like we are past that at this point. Um, we pretend we're not. Just, huh? I completely agree with yes. you, but we at the same time pretend you're not. Like, we pretend we're not. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. No, I yeah. think we're just still we're just still looking for new and liminal than this whole thing of multidisciplinary or whatever <laughs> is the, yeah, the yeah. attempt to find the new, 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 new. Yeah. And I think that at a certain point we'll tire of that and realize that that's not necessarily a value in itself. Mm -hmm. um, and I think going back to, is, is it Sylvie? What Sylvie said um, about the intimacy of performing, well, certainly your performance is one-on-one -on -one with people, um, but I think that in terms of why I do performance, um, it's very much, I, I sort of feel like, maybe it's a little bit of a protest, but it's more of a, um, a search for meaning for myself um, in a world in which, um, certainly coming from the United States, that's very, which is very different from Burma, but um, I feel like we're, we're pushed more and more and more and more into spending our lives on the computer and on Facebook and on watching TV and on not being here in this moment, not being present and not being with each other in the real time. I mean, I, I saw a mom in the park the other day feeding her baby and looking at her iPhone, you know, and I thought, you're missing this moment of being with your child breastfeeding and you're, you're on the iPhone, you know. It was just an incredible moment to me to see that, you know, and so, so I feel like, like performance um, is... Maybe she was reading about breastfeeding. <laughs> 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 but, um, but 
but I do feel like for me, the, the reason I choose performance um, again and again is because it is, it only happens in that moment with those people. And, um, and it can never ever be different from that. Um, millions and millions and millions of people can go be in the presence of the Mona Lisa and see it. Millions have. Um, but no matter if we read about a famous performance or we see pictures of it, only the people who were there at that moment saw that performance. And, um, and that kind of intimacy, I mean, it's, it's not gonna make as many art stars, right? We're not gonna maybe get rich doing performance since only five people can see it or only 100 people can see it and it's over. Uh, and we, it's very hard to sell. Um, maybe that's another reason I kind of like it. It's kind of, at uh -huh. least where I come from, that's kind of a radical thing to do something that yet you can't sell. Um, so, uh, I don't know, I guess those are some of the meanings. So the, the liminal to me is maybe that the, the new frontier is, is being personal and being present and, and not being electronically stimulated and virtual and someplace else in your mind. So. Well said. Yeah. Yeah, actually it's interesting that uh, when uh, young artists come out from school, and if they are in painting, um, they immediately uh, get a show in a gallery and uh, sell their works uh, uh, right away. And uh, all the emerging artists make more money than anybody else, basically, uh, who are uh, into uh, this type of forms that can be sold easily or not that difficult to sell. So the system is ready to uh, <coughs> include them in this business, uh, it's not the same with performance art, obviously, because there is no uh, way of uh, marketing it, or it's, it's very difficult, I guess. And maybe that's <coughs> a reason that why uh, not too many people want to be a performance artist. Was money ever an important uh, part of your uh, decision? Uh, Obviously, you have to think about that too, no? I mean, um, it's actually an interesting question, I think, and let's continue with that maybe, that how, how a performance artist can make a living somehow, uh, survive at least, uh, doing performance art, and you don't have to be a <coughs> bartender or uh, not necessarily have to do all kinds of odd jobs all the time, and. Uh, try to find some money somehow to buy your food. Is it an interesting subject? Actually, I have many subjects here I would like to explore with you, but uh, also we can change into something else that is more uh, directly relates to your, uh, your art. Yes, there is a question. Yeah, um, I wanted to maybe see if people could focus the conversation a little bit. Um, Anna, and then I'm sorry I missed your performances. Um, so my question, I guess, is only for Sylvia. Maybe you guys could talk about it as well in terms of your performances, but I won't you know what you're talking about, which is fine. But um, Sylvia, I was wondering if you could talk about the intention behind your performance last night and sort of what you were trying to like accomplish or if you were trying to accomplish something or sort of what was the underlying thought of that performance. Um, I have another slogan that says, Si je savais ce que je fais, j'aurais pas besoin de le faire. <laughs> so that means that I don't know exactly what I'm doing until I have done it. And especially this kind of uh, action, which is new for me to do, uh, collective uh, action on the spot, not knowing people, not knowing what will happen. Um, Actually, I think it's the same purpose as, if we can call that purpose or intention that I had with the, a one-on-one -on -one performance, is to to reach someone that and someone reaching me and there. Because the present and the others, that's all we, we really have. You know, the other stuff is, is stuff, but um, the 
presence of each other is uh, what is the, the true material for me to work with. That, that's what I wanted to research and experiment. Uh, it can be many different things and other material is good as well, but in my case, I think I wanted to focus like that uh, on that. And as I did it for many years, a uh, one-on-one -on -one or or doing performance in front of an audience, I think this third way of doing it is giving me uh, space to uh, experiment something else. So I don't know exactly yet what it is or how it's going to turn. Well, not exactly because you set up the space, you set up people, you put them there and you give them the trigger words and uh, the first gesture that actually starts the action that after that unfolds almost just like a little machinery. But uh, you're uh, there in some ways you are controlling <coughs> Well, I wanted to give a start to, to the, yeah. the action. The circle was uh, a form just to signify that it was between us, you know. And, and I, I, I find it was not the right place to do this form here because the shape of the, the gallery was not really allowing it to be uh, formally correct. But that, that's a detail, it's not a problem. And then, well, yeah, I had to, I was the one who was proposing, so I had to start it and to uh, install a, a code or a manner, but that was just the start of it. And, and I had to start it with, uh, with object, with material, before it, it, it turns to immaterial uh, exchange. So, and, and I, have, I had no idea how it's, it's going to turn. I mean, I don't know the people and how they react, and, and I, I did that, it was the third time I was doing it yesterday, and so it was, uh, it was different from, from the other times. Yes, what about I you, Anna? Uh, did you uh, do this performance before? No, just first time. First time? Yeah. You always do, never repeat. Yeah, I'm trying to go in this way. But they somehow relate to each other in yeah, some ways? Yeah, yeah. Like in what ways? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you hangover like me? <laughs> no. Oh, that's <laughs> Actually, I've become more high when I'm hangover, but <laughs> looks like you go low. <laughs> Well, anyway, what about you? In this way, uh, when you design your performance, uh, do you uh, lose control or you want to be in control? Or uh, how do you uh, plan things? I'm not sure if control is a correct usage. Because I, I think that, you know, one of the very interesting uh, characteristics of performance are all art performance, I think it's very immediate. So I think you can't, you can't really expect to control or not control. So I think it, I think it depends in which context you, you're working. So I, I, I don't know if I can answer this question. Uh -huh. Well, uh, I, 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 I'm sure you can because you design your, uh, you even send probably a, a proposal to. Uh, event like this that what you would like to do, no? Uh, you somehow design something that you are going to execute. Yeah, that sure, sure. Maybe becomes different, but uh, yeah, sure. you have an idea of uh, sure, what sure. you will share with. No. Yeah, I think this is an interesting point because, you know, uh, yesterday uh, I, I was, I think I was talking to Rachel and, uh, you know, I was just saying, <coughs> You know, I mean, you know, even though I, I, I'm making performance like this evening, it's not going to be the, like the, the, the first time that I'm doing the action because in my mind, I've been repeatedly doing this. And um, you're, you're just kind of like, a, you know, in a state that you, you, you're competing yourself, you know, with the real, I mean, real time action and the, um, 
you know what's happening in in your mind so this is and 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 you know i was just saying you know well i'm never satisfied after my performance because you know th there is something in your in your mind that you know you find completely absolutely perfect and uh, you know you can never follow up with the action because you know anything can happen so i mean that i mean that's my point of view so some or many of you may disagree or agree, but I don't care. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's excellent, yeah. Yeah, that's excellent. Please, microphone, yeah. Uh, is that working? Uh, I had a question, Sylvie, about the um, performance, like the structure. Um, so the circle, for me, seemed very um, strong uh, shape. And then, but the actions were very uh, subtle and intimate. And as audience, I, I was wondering if you could comment on this kind of inner circle and outer circle. And I had the question, um, sorry, anxiety. Um, if, um, if you thought that, um, like, I'm wondering about the structure of the interactions prior and building that up, or like, what would the difference be if just whoever came upon the space in the room was part of just one circle? And if you had um, some process around your, your uh, development of the piece around those questions? Yeah, those are good questions. Actually, the first time I did the the experimentation, uh, I was in a festival and I was, you know, it was a, a program with one, one performance after the other and when it was my turn, I put the chair in a, in a circle and everybody who wanted to sit sat and then it started, so it was a bit what you mentioned. Uh, this time, uh, because I, I wanted to um, to try uh, something that was more open, because in the first uh, uh, proposition, I, I, I do the action with each person and then it stop, it's finished. When <coughs> I have uh, completed the circle, it's finished. But uh, here, uh, for the festival here, I wanted to um, not be the only one who was uh, inside the circle so that things happen. And I didn't know how long it can take and which uh, direction it would take. So with Tanya, who was uh, working with me on this, uh, we decided not to let it include it in the in the program. So it could have happened without audience. You know, it, the audience was not um, needed. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it was you know it was okay without or uh, with. So that's why people were you know invited to come and go if they wanted. It, it, it was just a new uh, way of doing it, of trying it. And how did you experience? So how did you feel about the difference between the two ways? Oh, yes, I don't know yet. I think it was very intense. It's always very intense, you know, to work with people. It's always intense, really. And, uh, I don't know. Yet. Yesterday night, I thought, okay, I maybe I'm done with that. I don't know. And this morning, I thought, oh, I'm that and that. And that. <laughs> so <laughs> you know, it's my mind. <laughs> yeah. If I could just add something as somebody who was one of the audience, mm -hmm. um, it was curious. Cause I've seen similar kinds of things done as like a private workshop with no audience, okay. which I think would change it. But I think probably it creates a different stake for everybody who's in the circle, knowing that there's probably other people watching them who aren't part of it. Yeah. And there's also a funny thing being outside the circle, because I, it was very clear to me how I could have entered. How you could what? Have entered. Okay. But that was the rule was that we couldn't enter. Oh, you wanted to enter? But it was very clear to me, I saw many places where I could have come in and might have come in, but of course I'm going to respect the rules that you've given, but, uh, but that was also uh, um, a dynamic that I think 
has an effect on what happens as a whole. And I, I just wonder if you were conscious of that. Like, it, it's a funny thing to be watched being intimate with somebody else. And you have, in a way, two sets of watchers. You have all the other watchers who are trying to be with yeah, the, well. the one relationship you're having. And then you have these other people with a different status who are also watching. Actually, I was very surprised that people wanted to watch that. Because, you know, it's, they were outside of it. I, I really, I, I was very surprised. And I, I know three persons were there all the time, from the beginning till the end, and I was very surprised. Yes? Uh, can I ask Nan uh, a question? Sure. Um, you do, you, you said you work in theater, you work in dance, and you work in performance, and, and even other things. And you studied architecture. Um, uh, how, uh, do, you, do, you, do you always know what you're doing when you, when you start? Uh, what I mean is like, uh, how do you know when you're doing performance? Or do you, you, you set something up and say, this is a performance? Or do you start doing something and say, oh, I, now I'm dancing, now I'm making theater, now I'm, I'm an architect. Do you know, does that question make sense? Do you start off knowing what, you have the idea, and it, mm -hmm. it's never as good as what's in your head. I got that. Because for you everything is performance. Oh, well, uh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> but do you ever start uh, doing an action, and you say, oh, I'm making a performance, and then it's turns into dance or theater or vice versa or how do you how do you know when you're making performance? I, I'm not sure if I understand your question pretty well. How do you differentiate well, your question? In, I, maybe I never mm -hmm. gave you the question that's in my head, which is pretty mm -hmm. really good. <laughs> 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 so maybe your idea of what my question is is good. Mm -hmm. You may uh, how, how do I transfer from performance to some other medium or... Uh, no, how, how, do, you all, do you know when you're making art? I guess it, it, maybe it doesn't matter because it's back to that labeling thing. Really, you don't care, mm -hmm. but I don't care either, really. But I mean, I just do, uh, when, when you're doing a performance, sure. do you know that it's performance art? Does it turn into dance? Like, do you set, do you, are, you, are you performing anything? Oh, no, really, I'm doing theater. Oh, no, I'm really doing dance. Or do you always know? Or, you say no. you can do all these things. And you are doing all these things. Do you do them all? When you're doing one thing, is it all those things? Well, or could it it's, it's yes and no. It's yes and no, yeah. I, I think it's, it sometimes, it, it, I think it becomes too fluid. And um, I, I don't think. I don't think it even matter to uh, redefine. And, you know, I, I mean, you know, what I mean, what is worth, what is worth, what is worth anymore. I think, yeah. but I think it falls under like a big, big, uh, big umbrella term like performance. So. Okay. So you you are you are fluid like tonight. It might be performance. We, we could say that. Yeah. Maybe. But it might be dance, it might be architecture. <laughs> sure, why okay. not? Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Uh, yeah, so the elimination of the audience, that's a very interesting subject what you are trying to do, eliminate the audience, and that's what Anna is trying to do as well. She completely wants to uh, get rid of the audience, and somehow you too, uh, with your <coughs> socio-political... Maybe even a bit of dislike. Um, like, I love everyone here individually, uh, I feel, but like, as a mass, uh, the audience becomes a bit anonymous to me, and I become fearful of it in a way. I don't know if it, um, or or there's a bit of a, uh, maybe it's this idea of trust that we've been talking about as well. And I was wondering if Anna could talk maybe a bit a bit about um, uh, like what your relationship 
used in that way. Sure. Uh, um, yeah, uh, so um, I feel like uh, I can't really express uh, what I would like to say in English, so that's why I'm, uh, I'm not trying to do that so. Does anyone speak Polish? <laughs> no, no, you speak really well English. I, I, <laughs> I was having a really long conversation with you before and uh, yesterday and uh, you can express yourself quite well. Okay, so a little bit tired. She did a really, really exhausting performance yesterday. It was amazing and lots of running and uh, <laughs> yelling and <laughs> I understand if you feel down. I, I, this is the post-performance uh, depression. I have a good time. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, of course, this is part of it. So <clears throat> we have to understand. Uh, and I completely understand it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I, can I uh, just change subject? And uh, a little bit, uh, well, I, I like uh, to relate to their works and uh, their personal uh, doings, but I also like to, uh, to relate to the whole festival and, uh, and uh, the event and what's happening in performance art and how is it going and everything. So one very interesting subject I always find is the, uh, we already were talking a little bit about this at the first talk, the networking and the how it's going, but what I'm interested in that how do you feel at festivals? Like, is it uh, the really uh, moment when you can do your work, and is it uh, really the necessary uh, moment to express yourself and uh, and create something? Can you do it without a festival or without uh, this type of event? Is it for that moment, like? Let's say a, a landscape artist go outside with a canvas and uh, stand in front of a <coughs> something a <coughs> mountain and starts painting and doesn't need any festivals or whatever, <coughs> just to do a work. Uh, a performance artist can do the same. Yeah. I think festival gives a great occasion to meet other performers and do performances. Most of the performances I've done were in, in festival. But you, I mean, now you can do it in gallery or in the street without any professional institution or groups. I mean, I've done it along in the park. Yeah, but you, you say at the meeting, so you are talking about the networking uh, to see other people, but for your work, like, you don't, do you create your work exactly that moment at the festival? Or you already created this work before you came here? It depends, it's never the same, in my case. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the festival helps you, it triggers in you something, inspires you. Oh, sometimes I like to integrate other people's yeah. uh, things in the performance, yeah. like I did yesterday, when it was very light, but I used to do that, sometimes I like to do that. Yeah, but uh, what about in your studio, when you are alone, or start to write, start writing on the walls, and uh, you have lots of poetry on, the, on your no, walls? No, I don't call that poetry. Okay, I well, I do. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call it? Uh, birds on the wall. I call it graffiti. Uh, shima. No, I call it shima. It's not on the wall. Usually, it's on paper. Okay. Well, now it's on the wall. Yeah. Okay. It's a map. I, map is very useful to map, yeah. to understand. Absolutely. Uh, to resume, to abstract. Uh -huh. That's how, how why I do this. So do you do these maps at home? Not on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> In my books, I do have a lot, or but not in, on the wall. Please let the others. Yeah, yeah. Well, Anna, uh, do you scream at home and uh, you have a couple of megaphones to do that? <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, that's cool. Uh huh. And you? 
that actually he is going to uh, Lintat is going to do a performance today, and so we are going to see what he is doing. I don't know exactly. I mean, I don't know anything about what you are going to do. Any screening is going to happen, or <laughs> not really, or running in the street? Because I know that you are going to go to the street. No. Sorry. You are not going to go to the street today. No. No. Uh. Because you like to do that. Uh, I used to. Yeah. Not anymore. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, maybe I can, because I think there's a question that's related to that. Okay. Look for Lintet. I have seen him perform a couple of times on the street and in a more formal gallery kind of space. But um, Lintet, you mentioned earlier that for you, one of the things performance art allowed was a possibility as an angry young. Burmese man to express something, but now you're not in Burma. But I felt that the performances I s I've seen of yours are speaking very much of this situation for Burma. So I'm wondering who you're talking to? Is it about um, making other people aware of the situation in your country or to find some, I I'm just wondering what, about your audience and whether you feel you need to speak also to the people at where you come from? Well, for me, uh, if I if I may go back to his question, uh, why I go to the festivals, I think for me, uh, you know, personally, I I, I I try to go to some festival that interests me because I want to find the uh, like, how do you say, you know, I want to be part of the same 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 group, uh, you know, in which uh, people speak same language. It's not like you know Burmese or English. It's like some some language that we share. So you know, and I feel uh, you know whenever I go to festival, whenever I join or attend or participate in festivals, I feel quite energized. You know, because you know I always feel you know when I well I'm pretty much a loner, and I you know and I always have an impression that well you know I'm not. You know, I'm not, you know, part of this art community or that art community. So, you know, I think festivals kind of give me this energy. Like, you know, I'm in the, you know, same group, you know, it's about looking for the uh, same, same herd to, to join and to share. And, um, yeah, for me, performance art gave me a, a great outlet to express my anger when I was much younger. But now I think it's more about like, uh, for me, I personally uh, take it as like a, a form of like storytelling because there are so many things I want to share and I can't really, and I don't really want to share in a verbal way. So, you know, I use so many other different mediums. So, yeah, that's, that would be my answer, I think. Also, what about the relationship to Burma and the people who are well, Burma. you know, most of most of my works are, are highly categorized, are categorized as like highly political, and um, sometimes I tend to agree, sometimes I don't. But you know, you can't really escape from this political political conditioning, you know, since you're coming from Burma, and you know, these are the daily reality that you can't escape from. And and deep and these are the issues that I I I I wanna I wanna I wanna how do you say I wanna explore more as I as I as I as I grew up as I happen to know more about what's happening and you know how how I can relate through my practice. And uh, don't you think don't you also think that I mean. Even if you speak about Burma, isn't it also like about justice in general? I mean, in the European universal sense, justice between you know oppressor, oppressors and oppressed. Sorry. I mean, in your work, that is not. It's about Burma. I mean, you can treat Burma as a subject, but mm. in the same time, that it's about oppression in general and how to say. I mean, justice in general. The human condition. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I would say it's like exploring human condition in such a like oppressed environment.
Does it answer? <laughs> I hope so. Okay, we have 10 minutes, uh, just Paul told me. And Alma, is there any oppression in Poland? But I mean, is it any? Is it is it any oppression here? Is it in Canada? Is it any oppression in France? Is it any, any oppression in, in? I mean, you can take a lot of countries that we yes, are we yes, are free yes. and everything. <laughs> but yes, we have yes, oppression yes, here. Yes. And that's what I, when I said this to Lintet, it's like you know, you talk, we talked about the G twelve, G twenty or G eight meeting in Canada for two years ago, and and what's happening in Spain now, and what's happening in Greece, yeah. and you know, all over the world. So I mean, it's when, for instance, you are performing, we perform, make your performance in, um, in set, for instance, and you hit yourself, and it was uh, indirectly specifically about Burma. I felt like you know, it's about everybody, you know, who works for something just. Well, it's you know, I think oppression is everywhere. I think I think when 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 you can, how do you say when you. Uh, the oppression. I think. I think it's all. I think it. It can be all related, and I think it also depends on uh, how you intend to relate. So, yeah. Can I actually? Um, this, this this is a very interesting topic that I've been focusing on as well, and I'd be very interested for like a few minutes left, yeah. Um, what do you think that, um, in our society, and I'm, I'm mostly talking about the first world, if I, it's an anachronism anyways, but societies that are seemingly free and seemingly democratic, and we are seemingly free to express anything we want to, and still we talk about oppression and repression, of course, that's present. And then we use performance art in order to rebel, no, in order to to try to make people aware, yes, or ourselves even just. But then, what happens when capitalism allows for all that, swallows it up, chews it, says, "Oh, that's nice work, goodbye, nothing is changing." So that's that's my further inquiry. And I think all of us who are performers need to kind of face this. Is, are we talking, are we preaching to the converted? Who, who are we trying to reach? Are we trying to talk to our friends at festivals who invite us back to China and Burma and who, who knows where? Uh, or do we have a voice that's actually heard a little bit further than our very closed in very incestuous circles. That's my question. Well, just just as an immediate sort of response to that, I think most of the artists that I know don't exclusively operate at a kind of international uh, festival level. Most of the artists that I know who have a live practice have very deep and, and, and long-term engagements with the communities that they come from. And in some ways, <laughs> This, this, you know, this kind of thing that we're all doing right now becomes a sort of bridge um, between them. You know, like I, I would be hard pressed to think of, 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 of an artist that I know that only sort of travels because there's there's work. I think that the a festival is a very specific context and it's a very specific frame. And there's kind of there's kinds of work that you can do uh, in a community that you're living in uh, in terms of time, in terms of speaking to people in terms of using things uh, that people will understand that you could never do in a context like a festival, you know, and, 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 that's, and that's nice because then when you, when you come to a context like this, there's, there's very specific things that you can do, uh, you know, with the fact that it might be a, a, a white cube gallery. Like, I don't think the fact that it's, that there's a sort of format, somewhat of a format, that it's in a gallery that it might have to be between 20 and 40 minutes, it's just another frame. You know, I, and, and I don't know that I'm interested in privileging this context over, you know, doing a, a one night, you know, thing in someone's uh, attic or doing something in a local gallery. 
Okay. The, the, the hierarchy of it is strange to me because it's not something I recognize in the practices that I know of the people that are around me. Well, um, I think we have to conclude. Uh, okay, I was just going to conclude that there is lots of oppression still around the world, so we have lots of work to do still. <laughs> Uh, but we have still at five minutes, so uh, please. Um, I guess I feel like uh, a couple of responses to what you're saying. Um, one, in terms of oppression, uh, I think different societies experience it in different ways. And certainly I feel like coming from where I do in the United States, that, that one of the most difficult things to work against is self-censorship um, because of um, much more subtle subtle tactics for uh, for going against getting a message out yeah. um, and I think uh, I think that's something that a lot of artists are struggling with um, and even if it's self-censorship in response to a marketplace of ideas and trying to trying to survive as an artist or, or sell an idea or something like that trying to make yourself more attractive or something, you know. Um, but certainly in terms of just politics, especially since 9-11, um, self-censorship is, is a very real problem. Um, and uh, I would also say that in terms of message, you know, in terms of the notion of, of any kind of polemic in terms of making art, um, I think that the notion of that you have control over your message is kind of an illusion anyway. You know that once once your voice leaves your body, it doesn't belong to you anymore. And how your your message or how your performance or your what you think you're saying, how that's received on an individual level or a, a much larger level, is utterly out of your control. Um, and uh, and then I guess one other thing that I would say in, in terms of something that Ishwar said earlier on about the the sort of um, institutionalization of performance art as it's come around. <laughs> I had a crazy experience last week where I, I actually interrupted somebody's performance and changed it. Um, they were killing an animal for a performance and I, I went and I took the animal before it got hurt and I took it away. It was a lobster and I brought it out to the ocean and I put it in the ocean. <laughs> anyway, it was a little crazy. I've never done that before. But the thing that, I came back and I talked to the artist about it afterwards and she was very upset. But. <laughs> the, thing, <laughs> the thing that was interesting to me, one of the, th I mean, there were many things that came out of that discussion that were interesting, but one of the things was that she was very affronted, and, and she said to me that she felt like, um, like I should have, I should have just left the gallery or done, done something else. That, that by entering into her performance and changing it, I didn't extend professional courtesy to her. And that that expression, professional and courtesy, is something that like lawyers use, you know or business people, or advertising executives, or, and I was like, wow, are we performance artists? We're in this place where we're having this kind of conversation and this kind of language, you know? So I don't know exactly how that relates to, to getting a message out, but I feel like institutionalization is certainly a force which clamps down more and more on expression, so. Yeah, uh, I also said that uh, I think it's important to, to think about the challenges we stand in front of in performance art. We talk about incestuous uh, groups and, um, and small circles. And I think that, uh, I mean, for me, anyhow, the, the big challenge is, uh, is to you know, go out of the, the white cube or out of the black box and, and see what's happening in, in the world and with the mobility of action art. You know, Intervene. I think that's 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 one of the you know challenges that for me and how action art stands in front of you know to so basically go out in the world and you know maybe scream a little bit more. Not to let uh, uh, performance art degrade into pure entertainment or only entertainment that is uh, that has no effect after that. No, I think that um, I mean what I see in our festival in France, South of France, after eight years, how we have. Uh, changed um, the imagination of a lot of people. I mean, they come to us and say that I understand now. It's a little bit like this. You just said about the, I, the iPhone that the, the woman is sitting there, you know, giving food to, or milk to her child and watching the iPhone at the same time. I wrote about a, a similar, you know, similar example. I, I think that's what it's all about today: is that you know, people come back and become people and 
and less, you know, closed into themselves. And I think that for performance, what is the same thing is that we should go out to people and show them things. So, you know, give them what we have, because uh, otherwise it will just be, uh, you know, 80 people or 100 people or 250 people who were initiated and, you know, who can appreciate it. So Thanks, but out, that's out. <laughs> yeah, Roger then. So thank you for coming, and it was an excellent talk, thank, thank you for participating, and stay, eat some more, have some more coffee, and relax, and get ready for the evening's, evening's performances. Paul is going to probably tell you what's going to happen this afternoon, and <laughs> later yeah, in the evening. Thank you, Paul, anyway, and thanks, 7A, 11B, for this. Nice afternoon. Cheers.